Today, I'm excited to welcome in physical who just announced your Series A led by Elad Gale. So we have here Vlad, my duel, and Tony. So tell us what InPhysical is. We're an open source secrets mention platform. So we help developers across all types of companies, you know, from the fastest growing AI companies like Hugging Face to very large Fortune 500 enterprises like LG. We help them manage sensitive credentials across their infrastructure um, and yeah, solving lots of very complicated problems in the security and infrastructure spaces. What are these secrets you manage and how many are you managing? Yeah, I mean, you can think about secrets, anything that's sensitive for developer infrastructure. So anything from database access tokens to certificates to API keys to any types of credentials that developers have to manage. And at this point, it's billions and, and you know, north of 10 billion per month uh, that we are processing at InPhysical. Let's go back to the founding origin story of InPhysical. How did all the three of you meet and decide to be co-founders? Sure. Uh, so we all met at Cornell uh, throughout college, essentially. We were hacking together different side projects over the years, um, ultimately, which culminated in physical. And you know, this isn't our first rodeo working on something. Um, we had worked on a different project uh, before, but it was just only a matter of time uh, in terms of figuring out you know, what is it uh, to build next, and that became in physical. I remember. You guys had actually applied with that previous idea and didn't get into YC on the first try, uh, but you kept working on it and found another idea, which became in physical and got in, in your second try. And how did you land on this new idea? It's a bit of a kind of esoteric idea for new college grads. Yeah, I can, I can speak a little bit about it. Um, so yeah, Tony mentioned we worked on like a number of uh, different things before in physical. And one of the common themes that uh, they all had was the .env file. And uh, this is something we've seen kind of time and time again. And uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's difficult to kind of pass around sensitive information, even with a smaller team. Um, and so we wanted to go out and solve the .env file. How do you make sure that things are syncing between teammates? And so that was really the core focus when we started. Because you were hacking all, all these projects yeah, and you yeah. kept having to add all these secrets somewhere? Yeah, exactly. And and that's kind of how we started uh, in physical. And, and so we started off with this uh, problem set, which obviously evolved into a ton of other things, but that was kind of the start of it. When you had applied to the batch with this idea, you were actually closed source. And then during the batch, you decided to open source it and that became a key advantage from you. You went from zero to 5,000 GitHub stars in a span of just like less than two, three months. And now, two years later, you're at 18,000 and over GitHub stars. Yeah, uh, I mean, even during the NYC interview, one of the questions you asked us back then was like, you know, why are you not open source? And and I think at that point, you know, we we were building in physical, it was closed source, it was just kind of like a simpler SaaS tool that developers could sign up for. And we got into IC, but then eventually growth kind of flattened out and, you know, it wasn't really growing that much. And so we were talking to to you and, and to, you know, in general, like what we, we should do. And the problems that we kept hearing from people, right, is that they want to have more trust and they want to manage these secrets on their own infrastructure. And so for us, kind of like going open source, look, kind of like in the retrospect, actually is a very logical decision because because, you know, people feel much more comfortable about it and, and they're able to satisfy a lot of different compliance and security requirements that these enterprises have. I think the wildest thing I remember during the batch, you actually got a lot of very big enterprises using your product because of this. And the crazy thing is that just a couple months later, one of those users ended up becoming a big customer and it's like a Fortune 50 company. Tell yeah. us about how that happened. Exactly. I mean, a lot of people who find us, they eventually, you know, at this point, we have like very big developer mindshare and developer community around in physical, right? So a lot of people who find us, they, you know, might have been self-hosting in physical for a long time, maybe in their home labs, right? So like maybe they're using it for some weekend projects. Maybe they are starting to adopt it within their company because it's easy, right? And for self-hosted solutions, you can just do it very easily. And so with this company specifically, right, it was like some people who actually used in physical uh, at, at the old company and then they switch to to a new enterprise and they also introduced in physical there and it's also a very very big channel for how developers and companies adopt in physical too very cool and that got you to close this fortune 50 company you also got this large semiconductor company yeah. using your same same deal right yeah i mean at this point it's 
you know, any industry, you name it, banking, uh, healthcare, government, defense, so anything. And, and it's kind of like crazy to think that, you know, at this point in physical security, it's a very non-trivial part of world's infrastructure out there. So There's an interesting thing about your company is that at the surface, people could think that you're going after a very competitive space because as you started the company, there were exist existing solutions like HashiCorp Vault or AWS Secret Management. But you guys did something special because you closed some large deals. Like, tell us about this big contract you got going on. This is a, a different one. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different contracts. One that comes to mind is a big defense, federal defense company with north of 20,000 employees. They decided to go with physical over some of the existing solutions that you mentioned. Um, and when I think about why they chose in physical, I think about our core product philosophy, which is to make security more accessible to all developers and all engineers at large. And that's something that other existing competition in the market hasn't done really well. Um, we exist in a market with a lot of legacy tooling in place, a lot of very cumbersome technology that takes in the order of, you know, I think the average uh, deployment time for this type of tooling is in the order of 21 months. That's crazy. Um, and so when you can reduce your deployment time from 21 months down to just a few months or even a few weeks um, becomes a magical experience for a lot of these customers. And you know that's why they turn to InPhysical over other solutions. So, so what's the tech underneath my duel? Yeah, so uh, InPhysical is really uh, interesting because it needs to be, it needs to really accommodate a lot of different environments. And this is different from uh, a lot of other products that, that are on the market, right? We need to uh, be as simple as possible to deploy in on-premise, right? That's where a lot of our uh, largest customers are. Um, and uh, unlike other products, right, you're really only thinking about getting the feature out to production. Here, every time we think about, you know, making a new feature, a new project that we're working on, it's, it's always how do we, uh, how is the self-hosting experience going to be for customers? And uh, unlike other secrets management tooling that are on the, on the market, um, we really, really care a lot about how the solution is uh, going to be deployed on-prem. And that comes with a lot of interesting engineering challenges, right? And so, uh, one of the common challenges with uh, you know secrets management, other secrets management tooling, is that they treat the application um, as a database, and so that makes it really difficult to scale up um, in high availability settings, right? And so, in physical, is actually stateless, and so this is a big difference, um, is because you can let's say that you you want to scale up your fleet, right? Uh, within physical, you can essentially just replicate across because all the containers are stateless versus uh, other secrets management tooling where you actually need to make sure the data is persistent on each of these new replicas before you can even think about scaling up. And so there's a lot of overhead uh, that that comes up. That's cool. So how are you guys feeling about in physical in the future? Super optimistic, I will say. I think when I think about in physical in the future, there's really two things. Uh, the first thing is to continue forward with that mission of making security more accessible to all developers. I think what started as a open source secrets management platform is now becoming much more. It is now launching into from secrets management into certificate management within physical PKI, into SSH access with our new product line in physical SSH, into encryption as a service within physical KMS. You know, we are working our way towards from becoming just the secrets management platform into a much fuller uh, open source security infrastructure platform. And the second thing that I think is really interesting is to think about uh, this AI world that's coming up in front of us and what in physical's role essentially is in that future world. Um, and so I think in the past, we've mainly been thinking about users and machines accessing infrastructure and the tooling built around that. But what's interesting here is now we almost have a new kind of actor. And this is in the form of an AI agent, which also needs access to resources and even needs to be able to trust and talk to each other as well. So I feel like there is a future kind of uh, world here where in physical will secure access uh, for AI agents to infrastructure. So this is really cool future where you're going after. There's lots of stuff to build. So tell us a bit about the kinds of roles you're hiring for. Yeah, I mean, we are hiring across 15 plus different positions right now, spanning through 
engineering to go to market as well. So anything from front end and full stack engineers over into account executives and also even on the operational side as well in terms of recruiters too um, and even DevRel as well. Um, so really there's a lot of different uh, positions uh, to fill. Okay, very cool guys. So thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.